Yo, yo, yo. It's your boy, Mercy El Guapo, man. Street Certified News. We back with another one. Um, today's story, man, it got a lot to do with, you know, a lot of the rappers that's been dying and a lot of the violence that's been going on in hip-hop. One of the biggest rumors and kind of the little underground right now that's going on is in regards to Empire Records and their CEO, uh, Ghazi Shami. Now, um, for those who don't know, a lot of rappers that have been passing in these last few years have been signed to Empire uh, through distribution, some through their records division. And I was just hearing a lot of stories about like, man, what's up with this dude Ghazi? Man, what's up with this dude Ghazi? So, hey, we decided to, you know what I'm saying, go ahead and check them out. Hey, we here to let y'all know, man, like what's going on with Ghazi Shami, what's going on with Empire Records. And and is what he got going on causing or is is he, does he have something to do with well, all of these rappers deaths um we also gonna talk about uh the whole life insurance record label thing um and you know whether that could be a motivation for these artists to be dying just for you know their life insurance empire distribution slash records was founded in 2010 by ghazi shami ghazi graduated from san francisco state university um and he majored in radio and tv and film it seems that he grew up in the area, maybe he was even born in the San Francisco area. But when you do a lot of research on Ghazi, one thing about him is that he's a very mysterious character. He's done a number of major interviews like with Rolling Stone and a few other like outlets, but he's never put out, you know, how old he is or, you know, uh, where he's really from and, you know, his, his uh, background and stuff like that. He's never really explained that part. Um, and doing research, I kind of could see why. So I'm going to tell y'all later. Like, I could kind of see why he doesn't do that. But, you know, when you investigating a person and, you know, they're doing business with people that's coming up dying, it do look kind of weird that bro don't talk about his family, talk hey, about his age, talk about his background. He kind of just popped up in 2010. That's how it seems. But, you know, we're going to break it down. Coming out of college, Ghazi worked uh, in the senior levels of these music companies that were specializing in the new tech. Um, you know, in the 90s, in the late 2000s, people were still buying CDs. Um, they were just getting to the point of streaming. You had uh, uh, companies like iTunes and Napster and where you would buy the single song and then download it to your device where you could play it. But there was this new technology of streaming where you could just listen to the music, they integrate commercials in, and these streaming platforms were able to monetize the music without you actually having to go and buy the record. And that's, you know, where the music industry was going. So basically, fresh out of college, this dude, Ghazi Shami, was working with some of the major companies that were basically building this tech. So he was in from the ground up on, okay, music is going the streaming route. He then took that information and launched Empire Records in 2010, basically giving an independent artist with a little bit of shine, a little bit of name, he could give them that major distribution because he was part of the companies that built that for the record labels. So in 2011, Empire Records really took their first big step into rap music. Um, they, began, they began distributing Top Dog Entertainment out of Los Angeles, Empire being a California-based distribution company slash label they tended to start off working with a lot of artists from the west coast first and top dog was like their first major step into the hip-hop industry um through top dog they distributed artists such as kendrick lamar uh schoolboy q Absol, um as well as artists from the sacramento area like mazi gazi now uh, he took those relationships that he gained from working with artists and doing distribution for artists. And then in 2013, Empire Records founded their recording hey, division. Line them up. Um, from 2010 to 2013, they were distributing artists. Like I said, they was distributing Top Dog. They was distributing some other artists out the West Coast. But once 2013 came, they actually began their recording division where they would sign artists, they would give artists money, they would record the artists, they would market the artists, they would basically be what a label, you know, probably what you think of Empire Records today, they began that in 2013. So the rumors really start, they, they start manifesting at this point. Um, 
2013 to 2015, a lot of artists start blowing up new artists. It was a new wave of artists. You had artists like Young Dolph. You had artists like uh, XXX Tentacion. And, uh, and these guys, basically, you know, they ended up doing business with Ghazi. They ended up signing to Empire Records. This is where, you know, people started to go back. You know, years later, people would go back and say, man, this all started around this time. This is that time for Empire Records. You know, we believe that, you know, when rappers are blowing up and when rappers are dying and there are these big tragedies and they're blasted all over social media and you see their mom crying and a girl crying. A lot of people tend to use those times to be like looking for answers like what's going on? Why is this going on? And when people search for answers, man, like stories like this start popping up where you get guys like Ghazi Shami Empire Records. Um basically coming from the tech side of the music industry you get guys like him that um you know begin to start looking like these mythical figures that you know are outside making moves and you know getting people knocked off and getting people killed and it really mostly stems from these tragedies man people just need answers in 2018 florida rapper xxx tentacion was spotted leaving a motorsports uh, warehouse you know he was probably there to buy like a motorcycle or something like that he was blocked as he was leaving uh two armed men jumped out the suv um they reached in his car they shot him they took his Maybe. bag of money that was like the first big tragedy where a rapper who was independent but he was major though you know everybody knew him but he was saying independently the empire so he was making a lot of money and he had a lot of power in terms of controlling his music and stuff like that. Like, that's why people go to uh, labels like Empire. Rapper uh, Young Dolph in 2021, November 17th, he was killed. Texas rapper Mo3 uh, was driving on Interstate I-35 in Dallas when a car began pursuing him. You know, he hopped out the car, uh, gunfire exchanged, he ran down the highway and was eventually shot and killed you know they caught all of these people too so then that's another thing too like when you're thinking about a conspiracy and when you're thinking about like oh man is Ghazi shami is empire records part of this you know mega uh organization that's getting rappers knocked off i mean a lot of these situations to be honest have to do with these independent rappers um a lot of the reasons why major labels don't touch these type of guys is because they've had experience with this when you're an independent rapper, but you are kind of major, you making money, your face is known, your name is known, you still in that path of violence. And I believe that, you know, mainly, we're gonna talk about it, but mainly that's the issue with Empire Records and Ghazi Shami. They're doing business with people who are still kind of one foot in, one foot out of the streets. And when you do business with some type of people, this is what happens all the time. And that's why, like we're gonna go ahead, that's where the insurance policies come in. And that's where companies like Empire Records do have the right to put insurance policies on their artists. You know, they consider their artists as an investment. And that's just insurance against your investment. There were artists like Juice World, Pop Smoke, Just Happened, PNB Rock, um, Drake Yo the Ruler, as well as one of Little Uzi Verse artists, a uh, lot of cash DeSoto. So there's probably a list of 10 rappers in the last five years that were signed to empire records that passed away this is the internet's rumor thing they're asking these questions they're trying to figure it out is this a part of empire records plan do they sign artists and put insurance policies on them hoping they die or planning on them dying or are they even taking part in the deaths just to claim the insurance this is what the internet's been talking about these are the rumors right now these are the questions that are in people's head so here are the facts. Just stick to it, man. Street certified news, we're gonna give y'all the facts. We not finna play into some rumor. The facts are this. It is true. Music labels put insurance policies on the lives of their artists. And yes, it is true that when an artist dies, it benefits the label. In fact, as a result of the artist passing, they benefit by increased record sales, increased notoriety, and the insurance death benefit that comes from the artist. However, when you look at the artists that are passing and you look at the amount of insurance that could be paid out for those artists, it, the numbers don't add up. It doesn't make financial sense. You know, we talking about Ghazi Shami. Let's let's keep it real. We talking about a guy who 
he is Silicon Valley educated. He worked for tech startup companies that wrote the code so that these labels could stream their artists. And a dude like Ghazi Shami doesn't want Young Dolph to die. He wants Young Dolph to, to produce for the next 10 years so that he could collect on that. If Young Dolph dies, maybe that's a year or two, but then that's it. You know, that's a one hit wonder, man. You don't put money into artists so that they could, you know, only be hot for two years. It's just not, it's, it don't make sense from the money side. I want to address these other rumors that uh, the artist XXX as well as Young Dolph had plans on leaving Empire Records. And a lot of people are saying, well, no, he's not killing the artists that he's doing business with. He killing the artists right before their contract is up or right before they leaving the label. So, again, we talking about, you know, he is a mysterious dude, man, but I take that as this. He built these tech companies that now collect everybody's information. You see what I'm saying? He was part of the infrastructure. Like, let's not get it twisted. Like, when you see the pictures of Ghazi Shami and he posing with the rappers and he got the chain on, like, that's a persona. Like, bro is a tech dude. He a computer guy. You see what I'm saying? He understand the streaming because he built the streaming. And one thing about people that come from that side of the game, they understand that business come with legal stuff and lawyers. And I got to go to court and deal with this artist because he went out the contract. Like those are parts of the game that's already built into his system. Very similar to, you know, I can do business with a guy that's one foot in the streets and one foot out because I got this insurance policy and I got some other things in place that if he does that tragically, which... Ghazi Shami ain't got nothing to do with At least he'll recoup something You see what I'm saying That's that's all that is That's a, that's literally insurance Like you know You don't want your car to get stolen Just cause you get the insurance check Like it's not worth it That's a nice car Young Dolph is a nice artist So you gotta think in, in terms of business Like it, it don't make business sense For him to do that As well as you know All of the ramifications of murder And conspiracy And now he gotta pay people On the street side He gotta cover shit up he creating problems by doing that. He could just sign the artist. If they blow up, he make money. If they die, he make money. And then he sign another artist. Like So that's that's how we feel about these rumors, man. You know, Empire Records, we understand that they're doing business with street artists. And yes, Ghazi Shami does benefit off of street artists. And he does benefit off of violence um, in the black community. But he benefits just like Jordan benefits. He benefits just like Def Jam benefits. You know, he gets to sell that he's one of the cool guys that got the cool label, but he's not really a part of the community, you know, either good or bad. He's just kind of there to pick up the pieces, man. This is business. You know what I'm saying? This is how business works. Um, so also, you know, we do want to throw out that um, in addition to working with, you know, the hood side, the gangster side of the rap in 2017, Anderson Pack's album Malibu, which was distributed under Empire Records, was nominated for a Grammy, uh, as well as a, a, a group called Morgan Heritage. They had an album uh, that was produced by Shami's company and distributed by Empire Records. It won a Grammy in 2016. So, bro is trying to get into the music industry. He's using the rap as a way to get into the music industry of course when you dealing with independent rappers that don't got you know millions of dollars and lawyers behind them sometimes some street shit gonna happen yes dude probably got insurance policies but he's not killing rappers to, to collect insurance and he's not killing rappers because they trying to leave his label um even if a rapper wanted to lead a label, you talking about, you know, five to ten years of the rapper still putting out music, you're still collecting mu money. If the rapper was to leave your label, chances are he got to give you some sort of payout. It's all money, man. Bro is about his money. And that's why he doesn't want to share his information about his name and his family because he's a tech guy. He knows what happens when your name gets out there and when your family and your wife and your kids. Once all that stuff gets out there, bro, you are fair game for everybody. You see what I'm saying? And coming from that tech side he understands how important it is for privacy um it does seem a little mysterious like i said um you know when you look at the pictures of dude taking pictures with the rappers and he do give off that vibe but like man buddy on something he owned this music shit man hey it's your boy max el grapple man you know what i'm saying street certified news the most reputable source for news man and urban media um, shout out to Ghazi Shami, man. Shout out to Empire Records, man. I appreciate, bro, willing to do big business with artists that maybe other companies not doing business with. That's my personal opinion. Um, you know, just from looking at it, you know, giving it a couple quick hours of research. Um, buddy is a tech guy. He's 
he doesn't want to share his information so it comes off as mysterious he does business with rappers who tend to die that's basically the rappers that he's all the rappers that's bigger than that are on bigger labels so he has to do business with these guys and it seems that he's trying to kind of stretch his label into not just gangster rap he's doing you know different kind of rap he's doing he has some pop artists on his label he's won grammys he's just trying to be in the music industry man hey we ain't trying to make this video too long we just want to break down the boy gazi shami empire records it's your boy mxl guapo man street certified news we out